Hello friends, welcome back to Mule Nest Academy. In today's session, we are going to talk about or discuss very important topic, which is data integration patterns. So here, data is a valuable business asset. When it travels from multiple systems, it's very difficult to access it, orchestrate it, and interpret it. And often we, we see that the data won't be available in the standard format. Okay. So to make our uh, integration process standardized, we use data integration patterns to make our data accessible and we can easily handle it. Okay. So before moving on and discuss what all integration patterns we have, okay, I encourage everyone to please go ahead, subscribe the channel, share with your friends, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and uh, you know, let me know your feedbacks in the comment section. Okay. Let's let's start and let's discuss what is pattern first of all, and then we'll see how many data integration patterns we have. So patterns are basically a, a standardized pre-built uh, templates which will help us to solve you know, a specific a problem. Okay. So if you're coming from Java background, we'll be having their design patterns. Okay. So for example, singleton, you know, factory, you know, there'll be multiple uh, design patterns are there. Those are there to solve a specific set of problems. Okay. So if you have that problem, you can go ahead and apply that design pattern and get the results. Okay. Now in, in, in a similar context, in integration domain, we have five different, you know, uh, data integration patterns. Okay. So we can use those, uh, you know, integration pattern and we can optimize this. We can, we can customize them. Okay. And, uh, you know, based on our business requirement and we'll build our solution. So first in, in a, in a, in an integration domain pattern, we have first design, uh, integration pattern called migration. So let me start, let me draw a diagram first, how it looks. And then we'll say that, okay, in this use case, we should use the migration data integration pattern. Okay. So this is our So this is the, this is the first pattern in our list and we have five integration pattern like this. Okay. So let me draw a diagram over here. So we'll be having here a source system and we'll be having a target system. This target system could be a, a new instance of the source system or entirely different system. For example, initially, let's say we were using here uh, SAP. Now we have moved to completely a different system called, let's say Salesforce. Okay. This could be a scenario or this target system could be, you know, one of the new node added to the cluster. In that case, also we do the migration of data. This target system could be, you know, uh, when I'm replicating or, you know, uh, backing up my data sets in that case, also this target system could be the, the, uh, you know, uh, backup data with data set. Now the use case is we'll be migrating data from system A to system B. So we need a source system. We need a target system and we need a criteria where on that we'll be deciding what data set or records from this source system to be migrated to the target system. Then if you have the source system and targets, as I said, right, SAP itself, definitely their, their data structure of representing the data will be different. So we'll be transforming that data instead of that. We'll be performing a transform over here. Transform. Now, if I connect all these three, this is the use case for my migration data integration pattern. Okay. Now. Uh, as I already mentioned, right? So, uh, you know, a few scenarios where if you're, if you're creating new instance or if you're replicating data or if you're moving from completely different systems, in that case, we'll be using migration data integration pattern. Okay. Now, second integration pattern comes is the broadcast. Second one is broadcast data integration pattern. Here, what happens? Here, we'll be having one single source system okay and we'll be having multiple target system so in our use case i'll just take two target systems i'll connect both of them now when when we should use the the broadcast data integration pattern so for example if i want to you know 
send the a transaction data. Transaction data is basically, and so from the last run, you know, if I wanted to see how many records were added, just like if you're aware of watermarking concepts, what we do, we just send the updated data or newly added data or changed data from the last successful run, okay? So that transaction data will be sending from source system A, or we can say single source system to the multiple target systems. This broadcast data indexing pattern is similar to the migration in, uh, you know, in one context, which is we are sending data from source to target only in one direction. But this is a little bit different if you compare migration and broadcast. In migration, we are loading complete data to the target system, okay, based on one criteria. Here, we'll be dealing with only transactional data. So in migration data pattern, we'll be dealing with the, you know, bulk data or we can say huge load. Here we'll be uh, dealing with the lightweight, okay? Because our transaction data will always be, you know, it, it could be a scheduled job or it could be, you know, uh, you know, based on the event, okay? So this will be a very lightweight. Now, when in which all use cases we can we can uh, uh, discuss uh, or use this particular data indexing pattern. So one way I told you, right? If your target system want to know the information or transaction information uh, based on some event from the source system, in that case we'll use. From source system, you want to send data to target system without any involvement of humans. Okay, so basically, you want to do automation over here. In that case, we can use the you know broadcast data integration pattern. Third scenario could be you know when we are sending data from source system to target system, source system is not at all interested in knowing that what is the status of the data which I have you know migrated to the target system. Okay, so kind of fire and forget. If that is a scenario, we can go ahead with the broadcast. But in case of migration, yes, migration. In this process, source system will be really interested in the status of migrated data and how it is inserted in the target system. Okay. So these are the two one-way sync data integration pattern. Now, third one we talk about. Third one is our bi-directional. Okay. Bi-directional data integration pattern. So we'll talk about this one bi-directional. Okay, so we are we are done with migration. We are done with um, broadcast. Now, a bi-directional sync data integration pattern is like you know act of combining two data sets in two different system so that they behave as one. Okay, and then this type of integration need comes when you have two different tools or two different systems and we want to accomplish something different functionality on the same data set. For example, if I want to take example, right? So let's say you have a system where you are managing order specific data and, and you want to see the single view of a customer, okay? So your the customer specific data for order management, you're keeping two or more than two systems. Now, there'll be three, we can say, uh, you know, let me, let me first draw the diagram so that it will be very clear. So let's say, I can't say a source system or a target system because both will be behaving like a source and target. So I have system A and I say I have system, system B and I'll connect them okay so they are in both the directions they are thinking the data okay. So as I said, right, these two are two different system or we can say two different tools. And I wanted to have the data, common data set in these two, uh, two systems. So basically, if I want to single view, so I, I was talking about order management, right? So if I'm keeping delivery specific data over here or warehouse specific data over here. So as a salesperson, okay? So as a salesperson, uh, he should know the status of the delivery, but they don't need to know that where is the warehouse delivery okay and similarly if the delivery person is there right he he wanted he he should know that okay the name of the customer where the delivery you know supposed to happen and without without knowing that how much customer paid for that particular uh, you know uh, item uh, or particular order so these two guys are actually seeing the same data but it's coming from the different systems okay so because they are working on one common data set which is the customer uh, information, but delivery guy is looking in a different way and salesperson is looking in a different way. Now, if you want to achieve this kind of, uh, you know, uh, use case, we can use the bidirectional synchronization. So this allows both 
those people right uh, the delivery guy and sales person guy they will see the real time view of the same customer through their through their uh, uh, you know uh, lens of need we can say now the fourth one we talk about the fourth one which is the fourth data integration part okay. so this will be a correlation correlation data integration pattern this is our fourth okay so if you see correlation right and uh, let me add one more point in the bidirectional what happens when the delivery person and the sales person was looking at the data they were actually union they are taking data from two different systems and then the union happens and then you are showing that data to either to sales person or to the delivery person but in case of correlation okay the name itself says that similar similar diagram i'll draw here system a and system b so here we are talking about union in the correlation we are talking about only intersection so for example if i take the you know uh, so basically i i let me define first the correlation data integration pattern so it's a, it's a design that identifies the inter, you know intersection between two data sets and does the same thing bi directional sync okay so it will only sync the records which are available either if i'm doing you know a to b only common records will be synced no other records so this is you know similar how we bidirectional pattern synchronize the union data set but correlation you know co, you know synchronize the intersection now the in in case of correlation pattern uh, we can say that those items that reside in both the system may have been manually created in each of the system like two sales representative in, uh, you know um, uh, enters the same contact in both crm systems okay or they may have been brought in you know in as a part of different integration so the record created in system a record created in system b they, this can be created manually or it may, be, it may be created via loading the data or maybe a part of some other integration uh, system so the correlation pattern is not you know it's not uh, you know uh, care about the the unnecessary data okay only it will be handling common data which is common between system a and system b so in which scenario we can say you know the uh, in, in which scenario this data integration pattern is useful when you have two groups or you know systems they want to share the data only if both have record representing the same item or personal irrelevant for example if you have set of hospital okay or group of hospitals uh you know let's say they are hospital a and hospital b in so you know same city you might like to share the data between those two hospitals so the patient uses the either of the hospital uh, you know they will be able to uh, see the updated records in both the hospital and what treatment they have taken either or in, in either of the hospital so whichever hospital they visit they will be able to see the updated real time data in, in in either of the hospital so in that case we can use uh, the correlation data integration pattern okay and finally we have we have integration pattern called aggregation okay aggregation data integration pattern so what this guy does okay let me draw the diagram of this guy also what i can do i can create little space over here so we'll be having system 1 Now we can do the control V, control V. So let's say we have multiple systems. Okay, maybe I'll draw a line something like this so we show that we have multiple systems. Okay, this is system one. System two, we have N. Okay. Now you want to show the data in some. what i can say for the coding system over here so you want to aggregate the data from system 1 system 2 system 3 So aggregation is act of taking uh, or receiving data from multiple systems and inserting into a, into one. Okay. For example, 
we can say customer data integration could reside in three different systems okay and data analyst might want to generate a report which uses a data from all of them one could create daily migration from each of those systems to uh, to a data repository and then query that uh, you know query that against that database so we can instead of you know directly getting data from here we could get the data from uh, a database and this database will keep so for example i connect here instead of now all three guys are giving data so maybe what i can do or maybe so all three systems data we can keep it in this common database and from that database we can query the data and generate the reports but in that case what will happen so in that case there would be another database to keep track of you know synchronize this to this, this is the uh, data database and in addition as this change this change things change in any of the system we need to sync your database that means i need to have three broadcast integrations you know or applications you know should run they should sync this system a data changes to the database system two uh, changes to the database and i need to keep those those many integration applications live and running to to sync it but if you see whatever data is there in system a system 2 system 3 those data we are actually written in data we are keeping in the database instead of that we can delete this and we can use our aggregation data integration pattern which is our number 5 okay and what you can do here so we can say that okay uh you know so in this situation our aggregation data integration pattern comes into picture and you know if you build an application or use one of one of the template uh you know you will notice that you can on demand query multiple systems this one multiple systems and merge that data set and then you know we can view that as a single single uh you know uh, source of truth or maybe single view of a report okay so here we can we can you know we have flexibility to you know if here because during run time we are generating the report so we can generate a report in any format maybe we can csv or we can uh, show in the web page or maybe you can uh, dump into the you know uh, 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 a file and then share okay so aggregation pattern will give you the flexibility so to creating you know uh, orchestration api to modernize your legacy system let's say the system is system b and system n these are let's say legacy system and you want to modernize them especially when you are creating an api which gets the data from multiple systems and then process it into a one response another use case uh, is creating reports or dashboards that pull the data from multiple systems and create an experience with that data so this all use cases will be you know come into picture and then based on that use case will decide which data integration pattern we supposed to use and you know uh, implement our solution uh, i think uh, that's all from my session hope you liked it okay so please subscribe the channel share with your friends hit the like button hit the bell icon so that you'll get you know i'll get motivation and i'll come up with more sessions like this okay with all the best practices thank you for watching bye bye take care